Hi guys, welcome back to the R710 uh, build series of videos. And for this video, we're going to actually start out a little bit differently. Uh, in front of me here, you'll see this GPU, the Quadro P2000. We're going to start this video with a little unboxing of this GPU. And you might be wondering, well, why am I unboxing a GPU when this is supposed to be a series about the R710 build? Well, the the glue to between this GPU and R710 is what's in this bag over here. So this is a, a special component, special part for the R710 that I will get to right after we unbox this GPU. So stay tuned uh, until I get there. All right, so the Quadro P2000, why are we talking about this? Well, I know a lot of you guys are out there building your home servers because you're running Plex. And with the modern um, HEVC or the high efficiency video codec um, video formats, the, the uh, CPU uh, consumption of you know, encoding and decoding those uh, formats has been a lot more intense. In recent video cards, uh, NVIDIA has embedded a uh, encoder and decoder chipset uh, within their GPUs. And so if you're able to take advantage of that encoding and decoding capability, you can significantly offload the compute resources that are required on your server and be able to stream, for example, uh, several streams of uh, 4K videos and, and whatnot. And so I think sometime last year, Plex uh, enabled the support for hardware acceleration, uh, which includes uh, utilizing NVIDIA video cards. Now, you might be wondering, well, why the Quadro P2000? Why not just a gaming card, right? Or why not go and buy the fastest, you know, 1080 Ti or RTX 20, uh, 2080 uh, video card that's out there right now? Well, when you're using a GPU to accelerate video encoding and decoding, you're actually not using the full capability of the GPU. You're really just using the uh, subcomponent within the GPU that does the uh, video encoding, decoding, and hardware. And so buying a extremely powerful GPU isn't really going to make any difference. What matters is how many encoding, decoding units are on that GPU. And so, uh, and in addition to that, by the way, the, the consumer uh, video cards, the gaming ones, um, have an art, NVIDIA has put an artificial limit uh, on those video cards to limit them down to, to basically just two streams of video encoding, decoding. And this is uh, not a hardware limitation, but simply a product differentiation. So uh, NVIDIA sells uh, workstation grade uh, video cards like this Quadro at a much higher price point than they do the typical consumer grade gaming video cards. And so they've kind of differentiated the product lines and to justify the cost difference by uh, limiting the ability to stream more than two uh, video streams uh, through their consumer grade GPUs and whereas on the workstation class GPUs that uh, limitation does not exist. And now there are ways to get around that and I will probably create a video to show you how to get around you know that artificial limitation with using a consumer grade GPU but if you're someone who doesn't really want to mess with all that kind of stuff uh, especially because, you know, if you do updates, you'll have to like redo the hack to uh, re uh, remove the, the limitation again. So if you just don't want to mess with that and you want something that just always works, then you want to look at the workstation class GPUs for your um, video uh, hardware acceleration. And amongst all the available workstation class GPUs, the P2000 is kind of the sweet spot. It has it supports all the modern codecs, so the HEVC X two sixty five codecs, and uh, it also is probably the cheapest one that supports all those codecs. So that's why we have the P two thousand here today, because I'm going to show you how this P two thousand can work in your R seven ten with this card here. And so let's go ahead and start with the Quadro P two thousand unboxing. Alright, so this is a PNY branded 
um, P2000, but this is essentially the reference card, so there's really no difference. I don't believe that PNY did anything special to this card. So it's basically the same P2000 that you can get um, elsewhere. All right, nothing else in the box there. And uh, it's in this kind of uh, clamshell thing, although this looks like it's cracked open a little bit, but that's okay. Hopefully GPU is unharmed. And underneath we have driver software and documentation. So let's uh, open that up. So we have a CD with the drivers for Windows. Now this is probably a little outdated, so I'd recommend that you know you get the drivers directly from Nvidia's website. And then we have a little quick start guide. Probably shows you uh, what it's capable of and how to do a basic installation and what the ports are and all that stuff. Okay, so let's put that back. For most of you guys, you're probably not really going to need the stuff that's in here. And then we have a DVI to what looks like DisplayPort uh, cable. So I believe this GPU has all display ports yeah so there's four display ports so I guess the the cable is if you have a video uh, a monitor that needs DVI uh, you can use this to connect the, the graphics card to a DVI monitor all right so this is the Quadro P2000 it's a full height card and so you will need if you're putting this in the server you will need to put this in a full height PCI um, card and it is uh, by 16 so you need a by 16 uh, with a PCI slot that is a full height uh, PCI slot and the nice thing about this graphics card is I don't think you need any external power it's you know this is not the fastest GPU in terms of just uh, compute but it has the uh, video encoding and decoding uh, capability and I believe some people have run some benchmarks and have shown that this can actually run up to like 16 or 18 simultaneous uh, 4K video streams in Plex. So for, uh, for video streaming, this is uh, a very powerful little card. And it's also, um, unlike the con uh, consumer grade gaming GPUs that are usually double slots, this is a single slot. So. Uh, that's that'll be an important point to, to keep in mind if you're looking for alternatives to this when we get to installing this in the R710 All right, so uh, let's go ahead and um, Put this aside for a second and show you what's in here so this is the Component that we're going to be installing the R710 today that will allow us to Put that GPU in the R710. Now, if you recall, the R710 does not have, or at least by the, the default factory con um, configuration, usually does not have a by 16 PCI slot. So you might say, well, how do I install a GPU in an R710? Well, you could do the DIY route and cut open a PCI slot's end to allow it to take a longer card. Um, you know, some people will do that and some people are not so comfortable using a Dremel tool to do something like that. And so if you're not too comfortable with that or you just don't really want to mess with something like that, this is what you need. So this is a riser board for the uh, third PCI slot on the R710 that in has, instead of having two, I think, by eight um, PCI slots, it has a single by 16 uh, PCI slot that will allow you to install a GPU uh, type of card in the R710. Now, one thing to note, even with this riser board, you might not be able to install just any video card. And that's why I, I made it a point to uh, point out that this is a single slot PCI slot uh, video card. If you get a double slot card, so very common in the uh, gaming GPU space is to have a uh, GPU card that takes up two PCI slots it will not work with this riser, so keep that in mind. Even if you get this riser, you will not be able to use a double slot GPU. And the reason is because 
this here is the uh, lid sensor and so this here is where the top of the server case will be if you install a double slot GPU and it installs in this slot like this you'll see that it will extend beyond the top cover of the, the server case so you won't be able to close the server case so now it would have been nice had this PCI slot say for example been down here instead then you could install a uh, you know a, a double slot uh, GPU but unfortunately this option only comes uh, configured this way and so if you're going to use this for a GPU you do have to get yourself a single uh, slot uh, GPU like this P2000 all right so keep that in mind but anyway we're going to go over to the server install this and then I'll show you um, how that P2000 fits in the R710 all right guys so here we are in the R710 server and in this R710 there are five PCI slots there are two on the riser one integrated uh, PCI slot and then two uh, additional PCI slots that are on riser 2. Each of these PCI slots are 8 lane PCI slots and so that's where the difficulty comes in in terms of installing a graphics card. Now let me go ahead and pull out riser 2 and then we'll talk about this a little bit but basically as you can see there are two 8 uh, lane PCI slots so if you want to install a graphics card one possibility is to simply cut open the end of the PCI slot so that the graphics card can still be installed with the last eight lanes uh, basically sticking out. Now there are more drastic ways to do this. You could also, uh, I've seen people on YouTube uh, show how they cut off the, um, the pins off the graphics card for it to fit in a slot like this. So, you know, I, I don't recommend that. I think that's kind of a more drastic solution than cutting open the PCI slot. Um, but for a lot of people, you might not want to mess with any of that because, you know, even if you get a Dremel tool and you try to cut this open, you might end up damaging some of the pins at the end here, right? So anyway, fortunately, there is a fairly easy solution to get yourself a 16 lane uh, PCI slot in the R710. And that is this board that I've been talking about. So this is, let's see if I can get this in the camera for you. Hopefully that focuses. Can you focus for me? Okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but this is Dell part number GP347. And basically this is an alternative riser board for the R710. This basically replaces this riser board. And instead of giving you two 8-lane PCI slots, it combines those PCI lanes into a single 16-lane PCI slot. So by installing this, we'll be able to use a graphics card in the R710. And of course, as I previously discussed, this is a desirable feature, especially if you are running Plex on the R710 and you'd like to add a graphics card to enable hardware acceleration for your uh, Plex transcoding. So let's go ahead and install this riser. To do that, we first have to remove the old riser um, PCB board. And to do that, we simply have to remove this one screw. So you'll need a Phillips uh, number two screwdriver. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay. And once you have that one screw removed, all you have to do is slide this board back this way towards this uh, bracket here. Okay. And then uh, that should allow you to lift it off the frame. All right, so let's go ahead and put that down. And the installation of the uh, other uh, riser board is simply the reverse of that. Now, you do have to take into account that this little um, lid sensor switch is there, so you kind of have to slide that in first into the hole and then adjust this to sit down. Now, take note that there are one, two, three tabs here, and there are two guiding pins here. So you're gonna make sure all of those are in, press this down, make sure it's seated well, and then slide it back this way, all right? And once you've done that now, it'll slide a little bit further than you actually need. So just uh, take note to align this hole in the board with the screw hole that's on the frame. 
And then all we have to do now is reinstall the screw that we took out earlier. All right, so whenever I'm installing screws like this, I always like to kind of start going backwards until I hear a click like that. And that tells me that the uh, threads of the screw have meshed with the threads in the hole. All right, so there we go. The screw doesn't have to be very tight. And then we install the riser 2 frame back down onto the server. Now, in, in order to install this correctly, uh, Dell has provided these, um, well, on the board there are these two pins, and they're kind of like guide pins, and they go in the holes on the board here. And that, so as long as you are aligning that correctly, you should install this just fine. So make sure the two pins are in the holes, make sure the PCI slot is in the slot, and then we just press down until we hear the click. Okay, so there we have it. Now, let's go ahead and also install the graphics card so I can show you how that works. So, remember I said earlier that this allows you to install a graphics card that is a single slot graphics card. So, a lot of the gaming cards, consumer grade cards, are uh, often in double slot video cards. So those will not work in this case because if you install them in here, the the thickness of the graphics card will extend beyond the lid. And so unless you want to cut a hole in the lid, you know, that's probably not uh, going to work out very well. So in the case of the P2000 that we're talking about here, uh, this should work just fine. So let's go ahead and do that first by removing the cover bracket for the PCI slot that we're going to use. And let's open this up. Alright. So this should fit in just fine. Okay, that feels like it's fully seated in. And then we'll reinstall this uh, PCI bracket retainer thing. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So that gets the graphics card installed. And um, I've read some things online that say that these PCI slots provide limited uh, power. And that if you install a graphics card, it's going to draw too much power and it's not going to work. Uh, I'm pretty sure in this case, now that might be true if you have a very power hungry graphics card, but in this case I believe there is adequate power uh, on the PCI slot to drive this Quadro P2000. And so in another video uh, we will um, go ahead and show how to set, uh, set up Plex to use a card like this in this R710 so I can demonstrate to you that uh, this is a perfectly fine um, setup. For that okay so anyway that's it um, hope you guys uh, like this video I hope that this option of this uh, 16 lane PCI riser gives you guys uh, that already have uh, own a R710 some uh, new possibilities and of course uh, I have these in my eBay store so I will leave a link in the description for you so if you'd like to buy one for me to support me go check it out in my eBay store all right so Anyway, uh, give me a like if you like this video, and um, be sure to subscribe if you like to see more from this series. Alright, thank you very much guys. Bye-bye.